power play between power brokers. Just like the popular American TV series, Game of Thrones. There's an army at Castle Black. He means to take the north. This is the time, and I will risk everything. But this time, it's in Kano. He started in quick succession from Kano State House of Assembly and accented by Kano State Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf and later turned to illegal dispute with single stool having two occupiers claiming it. At the, the Kano Emirate has been on the news for a while now where Muhammad Sanusi II and Aminu Ado Bayero both lay claims to the revered traditional stool. Here is Nasrallah Palace where Emir Aminu Ado Bayero is uh, uh, sitting in his palace. Also at the Kofor Kudu of the Emir's palace in Kano, uh, Emir Muhammad Sunusi is in the palace. Uh but what's happening exactly in Kano? Well, join me on the Genesis. <music> Leadership in Kano can be traced back to the 10th century, where a man named Bagauda became the first known ruler of Kano. Years down the line, another leader called Ali Yajid and Samia emerged, proclaimed Kano a sultanate, and became the first sultan of Kano. Yajid was also from the Bagauda dynasty. After about 800 years of leadership under this dynasty, it was overthrown by the jihadists, and Shehu Suleimanu was appointed the first emir of Kano in 1807. Now, a significant event happened in 1903. The British captured Kano. And the then Emir of Kano, Ali Ubaba, was captured and sent on exile. Muhammad Abbas was appointed a regent of Kano. Now, this is more like a caretaker position. This was for his loyalty after he had led a force to surrender to Lord Lugard, who was the British governor of the Northern Nigeria Protectorate at the time. Muhammad Abbas was later confirmed Emir of Kano under the new Kano Emirate Council formed by the British government. So at this time, it meant that the future occupant of the throne was subject to British approval, a power that was subsequently transferred to Nigerian political office holders after independence. Now this meant that Political office holders were at liberty to hire and fire the emirs. So this should give a bit of context to what is happening in modern day city of Kano. In 1963, Emir Muhammad Sanusi I was dethroned by the government of the northern region led by Sir Ahmadou Bello in a clash of political interest. Similarly, in April 1981, Governor Abubakar Rimi of Kano State appointed four new emirs in a bid to whittle down the powers of emir Ado Bayero. Of course, the duo had fallen out with each other. Now, when Governor Rimi was defeated in 1983, his successor Aliyu Bakinzo reversed the emirate split, thus allowing Ado Bayero rule without hindrances. Now, in June 2014, the two became vacant again when emir Ado Bayero died. A faction in Kano expected Aminu Ado Bayero to take over from his late father. However, the governor at the time, Rabiu Kwankwaso, appointed Muhammad Sanusi II, who is the grandson of Emir Muhammad Sanusi I. Sanusi II had resigned his role as the CBN governor that same year. Again in December 2019, the Kano state government under Umar Ganduje divided the Kano Emirate in a bid to weaken Emir Sanusi's influence. Eventually, Sanusi II was dethroned and sent on exile, just like his grandfather. Aminu Ado Bayero became his successor. And when Abba Kabir Yusuf became governor in, in 2023, he simply reversed Ganduje's decision and reinstated Sanusi II as the 16th Emir of Kano. The Kano State Emirate Council of February 2024, with full support of the Kingmakers, I have approved the reappointment of Madam Sunusi Lami.
Fortunately, none has Muhammad Muslim second as the new area of Kabul. Now, here is the major issue. Ado Bayero is not living without a fight, as court rulings supporting both members of the royal family have been exchanged. However, the trend of events in the Emirates shows the stool to be at the mercy of the state government.